शुरू कर सी पहले ओके हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग सो टुडे आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग दिस पार्टिकुलर पेपर व्हिच वाज द बेस्ट पेपर इन ओएसडीआई 21 वन ऑफ द बेस्ट पेपर्स एक्चुअली आई थिंक देयर वर थ्री बेस्ट पेपर्स सो द टाइटल ऑफ द पेपर इज पॉल्यूक्स कोएडेप्टिव क्लस्टर स्केड्यूलिंग फॉर गुड पोर्ट ऑप्टिमाइज्ड डीप लर्निंग ओके सो आई गेस we are some some of us are using deep learning or working with deep learning and some of us are using and working with system so os etc so it is kind of a merger between both okay so who are the authors so uh, particularly so the first author the he is a phd student uh, and from cmu and he has papers in osdi atc and icml one each basically and this guy he is a big shot in cmu and works in primarily ml and currently is working on ml sys which is systems for machine learning okay so <coughs> so this uh, paper is basically about deep learning training in shared cluster so we want to train some model in a shared cluster which has multiple uh, nodes having gpus okay so there are Uh, several gpus maybe multiple gpus in each node and the nodes are connected in the network correct so each uh, so there are basically in this scenario usually what happens uh, these clusters are shared between multiple users okay and each user can also submit multiple training jobs and each such training job uh, the ml model training job is time and compute intensive fine so uh, this uh, there is a scheduler which takes these training jobs from the different users and then it schedules them uh, to the shared cluster by scheduling what do we mean we mean allocating resources to each such training job so if there are uh, say n gpus then those n gpus would be divided and uh, basically uh, there would be an assignment matrix the job 1 will be assigned to GPU three and five like this. Okay, it might also happen that a particular GPU is shared between uh, two jobs, so uh, that can also happen. So usually the objectives of such a scheduler is to minimize the training time of each uh, such training job, maximize the cluster utilization so that no GPU is uh, unutilized, and also ensure fairness so that. Uh, say if there are multiple training jobs then it should not happen that some job is getting priority and as a result of that some other job is getting starved okay and it is not getting a chance to even complete so uh, let us consider this example shared uh, cluster uh, dl training workflow here usually the first step is manual tuning so what do we mean by manual manual tuning usually it is basically users who want to submit their jobs they set some training so they set some training parameters and here the authors are say so i am not an expert in deep learning or machine learning so here they have considered that the training parameters are learning rate eta and batch size okay so as per uh, the this this two batch size and learning rate the scheduler can actually decide how many gpus is uh, required etc so uh, this the job the batch size and the learning rate these are submitted to uh, the scheduler and the scheduler decides that okay let us allocate x gpus for the job fine uh, uh bisha yes so is there any you know workflow mode i mean the model of the job is given somewhere in the paper or model of the job uh, mm. you mean or means suppose if i if i think about uh, in in plain and simple terms mm. the, any computer instruction or computer program consists of multiple different uh, instruction uh, instructions right yes now if i have to perform say 50 different operations mm. say mm. for timing now if i have to perform 50 different operations so it will take uh, 50 at least 50 cycles right yes, yes, yes. means instruction cycles yes. i cannot reduce that no if you, even if i use multiple gpus it will take 50 cycles only mm-hmm. right 
if i increase the number of gpus it to, uh, to it up to 50 then maybe you know that, that one cycle can be each and uh, right. communication one set of communication and at provided, provided they can be run parallelly yes uh, the, that part is there so yes, that model the, that model is given uh, in a later slide i will come to that just after this okay okay hmm. so okay so here basically we are saying the overview that how people use a gpu uh, cluster and how gpu cluster actually over, over i mean broadly works so yes after <laughs> setting the training parameters of each model and it is submitted to the scheduler the schedule actually sees i mean it actually consider cluster contention and job scalability what is cluster contention basically how many jobs are there and how many gpus are there so what is the contention between the uh, jobs for getting resources and job scalability means can uh, so job scalability means even if more resources is given to a particular job can it be can it successfully utilize those gpus and can it run faster with those gpus so that is the question of job scalability okay uh, but the second part is how to configure training parameters to utilize the allocated gpus efficiently so if you see job scalability and this particular question of training parameters are actually interdependent dynamic decisions so depending on batch size and learning rate the job scalability is changed okay so if we uh, if for a certain batch size and learning rate uh, even if uh, more gpus are allocated it might happen that it cannot run any faster okay so we will get to that in more detail so and this particular is the this particular point is the gap in existing literature and the existing uh, cluster schedulers do not consider this why because as i said at the first step usually they fix this batch size and learning rate and they do not alter it during the training process. Okay. So, the problem statement is eliminate manual job configuration which is batch size fixing batch size and learning rate to improve training time and system utilization. So, uh, the scheduler should automatically and dynamically allocate resources considering cluster wide performance and also fairness they talk a little bit about fairness and tune the batch size and learning rate for each individual training job and these two A and B allocating resources and tuning batch size and learning rate uh, they, they these two are done in cycles some when batch size and learning rate are changed resource allocation changes then again when the resource allocation changes batch size and learning rate can be changed so interdependent we will see how so this is the background about I mean how the jobs uh, look like I think this was your question so if, if we have a uh, batch size say this is the batch size then in a cluster so in a in, in training in a cluster so this is called distributed uh, DL training ok and uh, so here what happens that the batch size is divided into mini batches uh, how many mini batches if uh, there are n GPUs then n number of mini batches ok so each gpu receives a mini batch it uh, calculates the gradients uh, uh, here and and these individual calculated gradients are then averaged okay and this involves network communication so each gpu sends its weight to uh, say the master or each other depending on the uh, type of learning we are doing and these weights are averaged out and then uh, again uh, the uh, the global model parameters are updated okay. so so does, does this make sense now uh, yeah yeah to some extent yes so okay and um, note that the batch size that we are talking about in tunable parameter is this one not the mini batches okay fine so Okay, so let us come to one interesting point here. So system throughput and it, the impact of batch size on system throughput. So deep learning train, uh, training scales sublinearly with number of GPUs. So increasing number of GPUs, it will it doesn't happen that it scales linearly like this. Okay, and too many GPUs doesn't help to increase system throughput as a result. So and if you see this particular graph, so they have conducted this experiment with two batch sizes, one is 512 and 
another one is 2048 and in the x axis the number of GPUs is being increased. But if you see throughput in terms of images per second trend uh, or process, if you, you will see that uh, the smaller batch size is actually uh, getting saturated even earlier uh, after increasing only 5 to 6 GPUs. But the larger batch, larger batch size actually scales better. But even though after this point, it will flatten out. Okay, so uh, increasing GPUs doesn't always increase throughput. And if you see this particular graph, you will see that the most efficient batch size depends on the allocated resources and stage of training. So, if you uh, fix the number of GPUs, then for those number of GPUs, uh, the if most efficient uh, batch size has to be determined. Okay. So, uh, the intuition is that I mean from this result it, you can see that uh, it seems big batches can utilize more GPUs, fine. but uh, if you fix the number of GPUs to something less and allocate even start allocating more even more bigger batches then it, again it starts getting slower. So, we get a uh, uh, curve I will, I will show you later. So, we get a curve like uh, this it will get decreased if you keep the GPU constant and increase it the batch size in x axis. So, it the uh, throughput will decrease. <coughs> okay. So, the common strategy is basically Sumitra uh, is saying he is not able to join. Okay. Uh, Sumitra, uh, Sumitra, 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 so, no, no, means he is not able to join because of the permission issue. He permission. Is Are we in a wrong room? This is the link, no? Yeah. Maybe he is trying to log in from his. Anyway, uh, 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 I have an auxiliary question to your previous thing. Uh, what is the difference between normal you know cpu bound processes hmm. and cpu bound jobs and these type of dl learning jobs hmm, so are there any difference no the the, the difference is uh, they are they run faster in gpus instead of cpus and nothing is if you consider these are cpu bound jobs then in my mental model nothing changes so the uh, you can say that uh, it has some unique properties and those unique properties are basically this learning rate and batch size and depending on that how its performance I mean how the uh, throughput is affected and the accuracy is affected etc. Yeah, but same thing happens for C generally let us say if you consider a normal job which is you know CPU intensive processes are there and if I distribute them so the similar thing will happen right. No, I mean, so why they are uh, 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 why they are uh, you know emphasizing on particularly distributed DL in this case that that I did not understand. Means this is same for any type of job scheduling or any type of distributed. No, job scheduling. in only in DL you have the factors like uh, batch size and uh, the learning rate. Okay, so batch sizes are also there. I mean. If you have a batch, if you have, if you even data processing, huh, input data size is always there, right? With the any any associated process. If it is yes, a CPU yes. process. Okay, you can say that this throughput property can to some extent also uh, also be mapped to any process, any any kind of distributed processing, uh, right? Anyway, uh, please, please go ahead. Oh, Sumitra, I cannot still enter. Ask him to be uh, He is not part of this. He was, he is about this. And host is on this side, so I cannot do anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> now? I have again added him. Hmm. Okay, so the common strategy is usually to use a larger batch size to improve system throughput or scalability. Uh, 
हाँ ओके आई वन आंसर टू सुपेंद्र द योर क्वेश्चन वुड बी द नेक्स्ट पार्ट द प्रॉब्लम्स विद इंक्रीज ऑफ बेस्ट साइज इन डीप लर्निंग ट्रेनिंग सो यूजुअली लार्जर बेस्ट साइज रिक्वायर्स मोर इटरेशन टू ट्रेन एंड वी देन कम अक्रॉस दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉपर्टी विच इज कॉल्ड स्टैटिस्टिकल एफिशियंसी इन मॉडल ट्रेनिंग which is the amount of training progress made per unit of data processed okay so uh, if you if, if you see this particular result so why we cannot keep increasing the batch size because increasing the batch size decreases the uh, statistical efficiency of deep, deep learning so in 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 plain terms so if you see the definition uh, we need more or or basically per unit of data processed the amount of training progress is less okay so if you see this one batch size and steps and steps to reach 3.9 validation cross entropy so uh, this line should be the perfect statistical efficiency but the actual one is like this by increasing the batch size you see the statistical efficiency gradually uh, flattens okay and this and so basically this difference is the more number of steps uh, required okay so and actually not this difference but this shows that we need more steps actually we need actually many more steps because if you see this curve then yeah. so uh, as a result uh, just by increasing batch sizes it might happen that statistical efficiency de decreases and therefore obviously there is a trade off and so they actually con the authors actually conducted more ex experiments so they considered all these models imaginary yellow vc deep speech to bart uh, and all this and then they have measured statistical efficiency for two different uh, batch sizes across several epochs so you will see that always the higher batch size here uh it might happen that for some intermediate batch size between 1600 and 12800 it was better than this but we don't know the authors have only shown two lines in each of them and they are showing one higher batch size having less statistical efficiency always fine so uh yes. and and for all the models the behavior is exactly same okay so to note that statistical efficiency increases during uh, training also so as the training uh, progresses so if you see at the very beginning of the training it was very low but as training progresses usually it increases okay i mean it is not always so consistent but uh, usually increases so uh, the selection of the optimal batch size should depend on the training progress so say in 50th epoch we change the we double the batch size or something like that i mean that would be an idea right because statistical efficiency increases by default as training progresses okay so but of course uh, but higher we saw that higher batch size is equals to better throughput this this was the plot for that so uh and a throughput system throughput of dl training can be defined as the number of training sample processed per unit uh, of wall clock time uh, so of course there is a trade off by increasing batch size uh, the throughput is getting increased by by increasing batch size statistical efficiency is getting decreased so we need more iterations uh, and therefore it roughly looks like this if the x axis is batch size then the system throughput will be increasing with batch size but the statistical efficiency will be decreasing and then there would be some middle ground where the training performance would be optimal but there is a catch that uh, this particular blue line or purple line of statistical efficiency it is not always uh, it is it is not constant throughout the training process as the training uh, process progresses with uh, higher epochs i mean say the 50th cycle or something the statistical efficiency will be higher it will come to something like here or i mean higher than this 
okay so that is also a property so it dynamically changes during training so that has to be taken care of okay so this yes. statistical efficiency means the uh, training rate or something yes the def uh, def the definition is the amount of training progress made per unit of data process oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay okay it and makes sense actually initially we don't have any information so means we are learning very quickly Okay. I, I I am not. I think others can explain who know deep learning. I I am not exactly sure, but the no, I can tell you. You know, huh. common sense. No, initially, if you don't have any information with you, hmm. so you can learn quickly, right? And as much as uh, I mean, you you are gathering some data and you are seeing you are experiencing something. So hmm. gradually, your uh, your learning, uh, you know, or training progress. as they have said that uh, it will it will decrease slowly or oh, no but the there's also the opposite na if you see this one if you see if you see this is the, these are the training this is x axis is training progress 0 50 100 uh, 0 20 oh, no this is the cumulative uh, training progress but uh, the amount of progress made per second i think ha but this line is amount of progress made per unit of data process and that is increasing somehow i don't know how but yes. maybe others okay. can tell so i can tell i can tell you one okay i think this part is only the most important interesting part of the paper so how they measure it is this so they use something called gradient noise scale okay and this gradient noise scale is basically uh, related to statistical uh, efficiency so This GNS gradient noise scale measures the noise to signal ratio of the stochastic gradient descent. A larger GNS means that the training parameters such as the batch size and the learning rate can be increased to higher values, which relatively raise reduction of statistical error efficiency. Okay. So, again, but uh, I mean, how do they measure it? I mean, why this happens? I don't know. A larger GNS. means that the training parameters can be increased so increasing batch size actually helps increase throughput okay. but uh, gns uh, okay no i i i, I do not find any intuition <laughs> right anyway right and also actually how to measure it etc those depend on uh, the dl particular dl model being used but the uh, i mean both the authors have mostly focused on sgd adam and adam w okay. fine so okay so but uh, if you if you even forget how statistical efficiency is changing over time then also you have this particular trade off and this is there okay so considering everything uh, the, all those background uh, the authors have designed polyf cluster scheduler and this is the overview of it basically how it works is in cycle so it can uh, configure uh, the cluster uh, jobs and uh, then it can basically change the training parameters which is the learning rate and batch size and then optimize resource allocation according to the learning rate and batch size and again in cycle again check the training parameter etc okay. so co-adaptively allocates cluster wide resources and tunes per job batch size and learning rate okay. so per job means per ml model training job which is submitted so it does both and previous works actually did only the first part or the optimize resource allocation so oh, this is measuring part so this first part and this was fixed the training parameter okay so these are the overall contributions of the paper i mean they huge amount of work done by the authors uh, no idea how they did so much work but good first they uh, came up with a good put measure which is a measure of training performance and it is dependent on both statistical efficiency and throughput okay 
and then they uh, design the scheduling architecture that uses this particular metric good put to allocate resources as well as configure training parameters and use the feedback from each of I mean each other to basically co I mean what did they co adaptively uh, optimize with these two ok. And they conducted huge amount of experiments uh, on several uh, data sets etc. I will come to this <coughs> ok. Let us start with the first part <coughs> they came up with this measure of good put which actually uh, combines throughput and statistical efficiency how so uh, of course the key idea is to optimize both both of them so good put is basically throughput multiplied by statistical efficiency this is system throughput uh, so the definition is training examples per second okay process and efficiency is basically training progress made per training example okay so basically if you uh, multiplying them uh, what does it uh, imply the training progress made per second overall model training progress made per second correct ok and what are the uh, parameters here so a is basically the allocation vector allocation vector means which gpu is allo allocated to uh, or how many gpus are allocated to each jobs and m is the per gpu batch size so, per GPU batch size means the uh, mini batch size ok and the S is gradient accumulation steps. So, this is where the individual gradients from the GPUs are combined and the average is taken okay. and then this capital M is the total batch size and using this formula we can I mean from the individual GPU batch size and the size of the allocation vector multiplied by S we get the uh, total uh, batch size. This is fine, but let us see how throughput and uh, efficiency can be modeled ok. So, this first we are uh, looking at how can we model throughput. So, modeling throughput is uh, the, they have uh, broken down into two specific uh, times. So, first one is T grad which is the time taken to compute gradients by the individual uh, GPUs and then there is T sync time for network communication. So, T uh, grad actually captures the individual GPU uh, the calculating the gradient as well as combining I think and the T uh, time for network calculation network uh, communication is separate. So, there can be two cases actually. So, see the, say the GPUs are calculating this uh, gradients independently and then in T-Sync they are combining it this right. So, and this particular model can be extended to any distributed processing model it does not uh, only uh, it, it is not it is not that it can be only applied to this distributed DL. So, any kind of distributed processing will have the same thing the individual processors processing the data and the T-Sync is combining those process data to get the final uh, merging the process data to get the final output. So, it can happen that these two times are totally uh, independent and basically no in, in, in overlap between them then in that case T iter the final time that would be T grad plus T-Sync the worst case correct no overlap. If these two completely overlap, then what will happen? It will be uh, T iter will be max of T grad comma T sync. Correct. But uh, here uh, it can have partial overlap also, and that can be tuned with this particular parameter one by gamma. Okay. So this is how they model uh, system throughput. Hmm, okay. So if you uh, okay, and then we have. Uh, Okay. So, we will come to how this T grad and T sync be modeled individually. So, we are, once we have T grad and T sync we can find T iter which is fine, but so what is T grad? T grad is basically the amount of time required to uh, compute the gradients in a particular GPU in the individual GPUs. So, actually it scales linearly uh, with per GPU batch size 
So, just increase the batch size and the amount of time required will be more because it is processing more data it is as simple as that. So, this is a straight line ok and alpha grad and beta grad are the parameters which can be tuned to fit this straight line. But T sync is something different T sync actually depends on uh, uh, actually this is a linear function on the uh, number of GPUs because if you see if you consider that uh, there are n number of GPUs then the communication the communication would be it would involve n basically taking data from those n GPUs and then merging correct. So, if you add a GPU then that adds another uh, uh, network uh, connectivity. So, one more communication and one more uh, piece of data to average. So, this is also scaling linearly, but with the uh, number of GPUs and uh, this is uh, a bit different because it also depends on the placement of those GPUs. So, if the GPUs are placed in the uh, same node then it will take uh, less time for communication if the GPUs are placed far apart say in a in, in different uh, uh, in the same data center, but in different hosts then the communication time will be more. So, modeling that this needs to capture both uh, local sync and node sync placed in the same host and different host ok. Fine. So, basically we know how to model T grad, T sync, T grad, T sync and combining them we are getting T eta which is a system throughput. And the authors have conducted several experiments to show how uh, this model fits actually. So, if you see this one, uh, this first experiment is uh, uh, by changing the number of GPUs and the second experiment is by changing the total batch size. In both cases you will see that the actual system throughput uh, is fitting well with the, uh, the model is fitting well with the actual system throughput. Right? So, this enables Polyux to automatically determine the right number of GPUs and batch size and use gradient accumulation to increase the batch size beyond the limits of uh, GPU memory and it tries to pack a uh, jobs GPU into fewer nodes to minimize network overhead because otherwise T sync will be higher. So, for, if for a particular job if for a single job T sync is higher then of course, the throughput will be worse. Okay. Now, we come to modeling statistical efficiency. This is a bit difficult for me to understand because it involves several uh, previous works. So, as I uh, described before the statistical efficiency can be measured in terms of gradient noise scale okay. and a larger gradient noise scale means that the training parameters such as batch size and learning rate can be increased to higher values with less reduction in statistical efficiency. Okay. And then uh, here this uh, basically uh, efficiency the statistical efficiency and t is t is basically the iteration because statistical efficiency changes with iteration it be actually uh, I mean with Subrendu's intuition it should be lower, but actually it turns out that statistical efficiency uh, usually increases with t ok. So, phi t is the gradient noise scale and M0 is the baseline batch size provided by the user. So, when submitting the job the user provides some ba batch size M0 which is considered as the baseline batch size and then the mo model I mean it and then the batch size can be changed the capital M the actual batch size can be changed for which we are calculating the efficiency and, uh, and this particular formula will give us the an estimate of the statistical efficiency for this new batch size m ok. Fine. So, from the experiments also they show that the uh, model actually fits very well with the actual statistical efficiency uh, observed and this graph we already discussed before that for usually with training time statistical efficiency increases and usually for higher batch size uh, it is less ok. They uh, the authors conducted basically uh, many different experiments on different models imaginate YOLO 
and uh, they evaluated uh, their model of predicting or basically their, their modeling of uh, throughput and statistical efficiency. The first set of graphs is for statistical efficiency, second set of graphs is for throughput. So, they have uh, run it for all these different models and in both cases you can see that their model of statistical efficiency is fitting very well with the actual one and same for throughput lot of experiments and the actually the paper is I mean the first uh, two pages of the paper is text and then mostly it every page has some experiment. Okay. So, we now uh, we have seen that we have how to model good put as a measure of throughput and statistical efficiency and how to individually also model these two. So, we are coming to the scheduling architecture part. So, how to use this good put to do both allocate resources and configure training parameter. So, this is the overall architecture of Pollux and if you so this is the systems part. So, if you if you see that there are two nodes and nodes are basically hosts with multiple GPUs. If you see this node it has three node two has three. Okay. Now, uh, uh, there are two part one is pollux agent and one agent can actually be handling may I mean as many nodes a, as it want basically an agent is associated with a job not a node ok. So, if you consider this job one then job one's agent is basically uh, has basically allocated job one to these GPUs three from node one and one from node two. So, it is spanning over both these nodes correct and the uh, job 2 agent the agent which is handling job 2 uh, is working with these two uh, nodes. So, they have not explicitly given any example where one GPU is shared between two jobs so, I think they have not uh, conducted the experiments with that case. So, okay. so, what is the role of these agents? So, a pollux agent so, if you consider this particular agent which is handling the job 2 and two GPUs okay. then uh, two GPUs uh, are uh, training the uh, batches. So, Pollux agent has two roles one is uh, tune uh, and uh, basically that, that that means tuning the batch size and the learning rate and also profile which is <laughs> determine the throughput and uh, the statistical efficiency compute the good put and then figure out the next suitable uh, set of batch size and learning rate. So, you can say that uh, this profiling and tuning goes in cycle. So, it will keep on monitoring the batch uh, and this good put and tune it to get uh, the best result. Apart from that <laughs> what it does it, it uh, the profiler also sends the uh, status the actual good put value to the polyx scheduler. Okay. And based on that polyscheduler can actually determine if a job can make use of more GPUs okay. or if a job is not being able to make use of the allocated GPUs and we can take one GPU out from it. So, this is the idea. So, uh, this uh, allocates resources for the first time checks if polyx agent can make use of more resources or not and accounts for reallocation delay or and network overheads also. So, reallocation delay means uh, when a uh, particular allocation is being changed then the job trainings would be practically halted for a moment and then uh, again it will resume. And uh, network overhead means say for example, here node 1 has 3 GPUs, but another GPU is in node 2. So, the T sync between these two will be very high. Uh, or at least considerably higher because they are in two different hosts. Fine. So, how uh, polyx agent optimizes? So, polyx agent's main role is to optimize good put, right. So, given an allocation of GPUs A, allocation vector, solve this particular equation that uh, how can we change M and S uh, so that the good put can become uh, can be maximized. Okay. And the polyscheduler uh, 
its role is to optimize cluster wide uh, allocation so it basically checks this so uh, there is a metric called speed up okay and in the numerator you can see uh, uh, the best good put with a new allocation capital aj and uh, and then okay um let me open the I forgot what we did. So this capital A is a is a new allocation and this small A F is a uh, fair allocation. Okay, and it is trying to find a new allocation which can also uh, accommodate fairness. Okay, and the idea is to. Uh, uh, basically find a new allocation based on this speed up speed up is basically a trade off between the best allocation and fair allocation right and uh, they they have skipped some parts in the polyscheduler objective function here they also i mean in the appendix they have provided the details so the, apart from finding out the best um, free trade off between the best allocation and fair allocation the polyscheduler also takes into account the reallocation penalty which is how for how much time if, if suppose a job will complete in uh, say 30 seconds and reallocation takes 10 seconds then what is the point of reallocating right uh, i mean uh, give it 30 seconds and let it complete like this. so they have they consider that also and they also consider the uh, this uh, network overhead t sync time okay so let us come to implementation they have implemented polyx agent as a python library which can be incorporated into pytorch okay and polyx scheduler actually is implemented as a service is Kuber service in kubernetes and uh, we, i found that the baselines also actually use kubernetes to uh, implement those uh, schedulers. They have uh, completely open sourced it and uh, there are also some results which are uh, which they have published uh, by ed using directly this adapt dl library which is the implementation of polyx scheduler. Uh, so, this particular code has these two parts one is adapt dl sked which is a cluster scheduler using kubernetes for optimized for deep uh, learning training and adapt dl which is a library for uh, tuning the batch size okay, uh, for better uh, training efficiency. Okay, so let us come to evaluation. Uh, this is their evaluation setup. They have a test bed cluster with 64 GPUs. Actually, they have taken uh, okay, how many nodes? Uh, each has four, 16. The 16 uh, AWS uh, EC2. Uh, this instant 12x large which has 4 NVIDIA T4 GPUs each and these many CPUs memory RAM and the workload that they have used to uh, evaluate their system is basically uh, de from some cluster traces published by Microsoft in uh, Microsoft in this particular paper in ATC 90. Apart from that they also have some simulator experiments to and for that they have built a custom discrete time cluster simulator but mostly the results are from this uh, cluster uh, with in the in the real test bed basically these are the data sets and the models which they have used to evaluate the systems they have uh, several uh, task image classification object detection speech recognition question answering etc etc and uh, different models and different data sets for those Okay, so this this is uh, some result. So basically, they have uh, mostly compared it with Optimus and this one, Tiresias or something. I yeah. So and the job completion time, 
uh, is basically much uh, lower than the baselines here and the 99 percentile job completion time is also significantly uh, lower. Okay, what is the okay? Let me just point out again that the uh, these two baselines are basically uh, both of them use uh, the experts configured jobs. So, which is basically the user is an expert who configures the job with a good batch size and a good learning rate. Okay. And uh, this one Optimus can elastically adapt resources, but not uh, batch size or learning rate and the this one which is the older one or worse one basically can pause resume jobs based on their uh, GPU time matrix. So, uh, this has a different feature I mean and but both of them are uh, poly short performs both of them both of them. So, okay. so, this is one particular result which uh, let me focus on. So, this is basically the exact uh, average statistical efficiency uh, or measured basically measured statistical efficiency with time okay during the training process and uh, i can i can see that here the statistical efficiency is kind of being regulated okay uh, basically here if you see the blue line the statistical efficiency was quite high till this point and then this it this, then it got low and then again increase. So, the authors argue that during this high point, uh, this was a period of high cluster contention. So, basically many jobs were submitted and each job was getting less number of GPUs. Okay. So, uh, Polix reduces number of GPUs and batch size and trains with higher statistical efficiency. So, it tunes the parameter instead and when the cluster contention is low, uh, then Polix can give more uh, GPU and tune the parameter such that this throughput increases, but statistical efficiency can be low. So, it is a balance of both okay. and ultimately the idea is to keep good put stable. So, here in this case actually throughput would be low, so good put would be same and in this case throughput would be high, so good put would be same like this. Okay. And that was it. So, questions if you have any. <coughs> so, is that? <laughs> Bass, <laughs> Any questions? No, what I like about this paper is how they have modeled the entire thing. I mean, uh, yes, yes. So, yes. actually, what I one is doing a, uh, this, this statistical efficiency modeling and uh, this thing, uh, another put. one was to like, put uh, model. Good, 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 good modeling. Yes. So, in can if we can you know take this approach and try to extend it in in terms of say NFB modeling NFB job modeling. Hmm. So actually, what I found is that it, the amount of work that they have done, if you consider the job scheduling part, say this one, fairness and speed up, and this trade off, and if you add the parts in appendix that uh, the reallocation and network delay then this only this one column will be one transaction paper ok. Then if you consider the modeling part then good put modeling will be another transaction paper and then you combine those two and then they, that will be another transaction paper. So, they have done so much in one. So, you are suggesting they have wasted their No, it is it, I think this is the better way approach right put everything in one system, then open source that system. Anyway. <laughs> and you won't get a job in India by, by do, doing like this. But yes, that's 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 what I'm saying. Uh, that is not. They will count how many transactions you have. Mm.
Who is DI? That's. Who is DI? Best paper. Yeah, it's not in our list. <laughs> Easy, easily, three transaction transaction papers easily uh, can could have been made from this amount of work. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if there is anybody has any question, I don't have anything else to discuss. Okay, hello.